And this is that weird thing I was talking about. And, all right, so uh, welcome to another collective conversation. I'm your host, Mike Brewer, and I'm extremely excited about today's episode. Our guest today is Jindu Lee, CEO and founder of HappyCo. HappyCo is the leading real the leading real time operations platform uh, for property management. The Happy Inspector product is used by thousands of companies and has captured more than a hundred million items inspected worldwide. That is amazing. We're going to dig into that. Uh, founder. Uh, founded in 2011, their mission is to deliver delightful mobile and cloud business software that makes work happier. I think we're all interested in making our work happier. Jindu, welcome to the show. Hey, Mike. How are you? I'm very excited to be part of this, this show. Oh, well, th thank you. I really appreciate you taking time out to do it. I know you are a busy uh, person. You're uh, actually in Australia this morning and it is 730 or almost eight o'clock there now. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. And um, it's funny you said I actually am not that busy these days, but don't tell anyone that. Because, uh, <laughs> <meetings> Too late. <laughs> with... <laughs> but yeah, I can, I'm happy to maybe even dive a little bit deeper on, on, on that topic of being busy because I think that's a an interesting piece of, um, yeah, something I can probably riff on about for a little bit as well. Oh, I, I love that. Yes, let's do that. So I know you spend time between uh, California and Australia, and I know you've been I sort of let's call it locked out of Australia for the last couple of years and you're, you're back now. But uh, before we do that, let's, why don't you tell our audience, both viewers and listeners, a little bit about yourself and maybe your origin stories in, in uh, business? Oh, yeah. So um, so I actually have a very non-traditional route to to business. Um, I actually grew up in Australia and I grew up in a small town called Darwin, which um, you know, if you watch Crocodile Dundee uh, in the top band, you know, call this a knife, this is a knife, you know, that, that kind of stuff. That's where Darwin is. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I grew up in Darwin, didn't have much, um, a very small town. I remember when my parents first migrated over there, the airport was literally a dirt track and, and it's, yeah, we landed and you had to kind of run in and all this dust would fly around. Um, but that was like, you know, the 80s, right? So, um, man, it, so we moved from Darwin, um, went to Adelaide for university. So I, I studied graphic design at university again, which, you know, the, um, the, the Asian parents dream is for your, your, your son to be a doctor or a lawyer, or um, these days, even an actor, but um, no, I, I did graphic design, uh, <laughs> but my parents didn't really have that many, that much high hopes of me. I, I think they were just happy that I was going to college or university. Um, so from that perspective, I was very lucky. I don't think anyone, I think one of first in my family, or at least my immediate, my close family circle to go to, to, to college. Um, finished that off and I worked for a video gaming company. Um, I had a couple of like uh, web design jobs and then eventually worked in a video gaming company called Midway Games. Um, if you recall, Midway built Mortal Kombat. Uh, right. Got <laughs> so I actually was fortunate enough to kind of work on the uh, on those games and and you know growing up being a big fan of them like wow this is like the most amazing thing. Um, the cra crazy thing is like it, it uh, when you work in games you you realize how the sausage is made and you're like oh man that the magic of games just disappear so oh. <laughs> I, I stopped doing that moved back to Australia and. Um, what did I do then? I started a web agency, so I started my own company, um, grew that. It was fine, grew to about, I think, 20 or 30 people, then I sold it and um, started to buy real estate. So I started investing in Australia, um, doing subdivisions, renovations, you know, rehabs, flipping. And in 2010, I started buying in the US. So I started buying real estate in the financial crisis, uh, buying buying onesie twosies in Memphis and Cleveland. And it was just an amazing experience. So um, yeah, it's, Australia has very few cash flowing properties, which is very interesting. <laughs> yeah, which is, you're looking at me going, what do you mean? Like it's, it's really hard to find a positively cash flowing property in Australia. Everything is negative geared. Um, so you're down, you, know, you, you essentially you, you buy a property, you lose money on it and you get your you get tax a tax break. <laughs> so oh, weird. Got it. <laughs> and so when someone said to me, "Hey, you should go check out properties in the U.S.," uh, I was like, "Oh, cool!" And and that's how I started buying in the U.S. 
Uh, you like cash flow better than negative cash flow. <laughs> I, I was like, well, surely you know, there's a way to make. You know. And and it was really because at that time I was trying. So my dad's a a, a blue collar worker, and so he he's worked you know, really hard all his life. And I remember motivation for me was to try to make enough passive income for him to retire. Oh wow! I, and, and I eventually kind of got there. Uh, maybe not for him to fully retire, but. I eventually got there and um, I asked him one day, I went, hey, dad, um, do you want to retire? And he's like, no. And then do what? <laughs> I, was like, working, like, I mean, you know, slaving my, my butt off trying to get, yeah. And, and I, so I just realized it was like a really enlightening moment where I'm like, oh, maybe he doesn't need that. <laughs> he, doesn't need, he, he enjoys what he does. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I so did that for a bunch of years and um, that's sort of how I, found this the problem the problem which I'm trying to solve now at, at our company um what, what I did say at that time I started another company uh called Mighty Kingdom and Mighty Kingdom today they're listed on the Australian Stock Exchange and they're um uh, uh, essentially build games for like Lego and all these cool cool companies um but I, but I started that and started having uh, I started that web that company and then I had these issues with my properties you know there were, there were all these damages in them and essentially, the, there wasn't a way to collect the condition of the property. So when it came to move in, move outs, um, the tenant would argue that they punched a hole in the wall and we weren't able to collect the deposit. So that's that sort of gave me the uh, in, the inspiration to go look and, and find out why are my property managers so bad at their job? <laughs> and I realized there just wasn't any tools out there. So I then um, remember building a trying to build an, an app that you could use for inspecting a property and i made some screenshots on an ipad one i just rang like cold call 20 companies and these are all single family property managers so i cold called 20 of them in australia uh, one of them in the us was my property my property manager and i said hey i got an idea for an app can i come show it to you I'm like, yep sure so i came went into the offices and essentially just demoed vaporware and they're going, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm so, oh my, it's going to make me so happy. Oh, I'm so happy you're doing this. And so that, then the next question they asked was like, how much is the software? And I'm like, uh, I don't really know. <laughs> this is real. These are screenshots. Uh, yeah. So uh, we actually had 19 of the people I visited sign up to use the software where we had just a concept. And so that's, wow. that's the genesis of um, this. The, the current business. So at that stage, we called it Happy Inspector um, because everyone kept saying it made them happy and <laughs> no one usually says that about software. So, <laughs> so yeah, so that, that's our origin of ha Happy Code. I, I love that. I, I've always been interested in how you got to the to the name and I was going to ask you about that today, but you answered the question. That, that's yeah, awesome. it, 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 it's really funny because um, one of our first conferences we went to, uh, it was in Virginia. Um, I think it was in uh, close to West Virginia. I knew there was a really interesting kind of border <laughs> that we had to kind of cross. And, um, and it was there, and um, uh, it was a single family con property management conference, so NARPM conference. And this, it was just myself at the booth, and my wife was just helping out because we had we just started the company, right? And and she was like, "Oh, all right, I'm going to come with you." She had no idea what we were selling. And wait, wait, wait. this 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 customer came, a prospect came, walked up to the booth and he goes, he looked at me, looked at the software, he goes, happy, happy, I get it. It's like Chinese restaurant. I'm like, no, it's oh, not. No. <laughs> but you know, like, and to me it's funny because I, I I'm I'm used to casual racism. I grew up in Australia in the 80s. It's fine. But it was just funny because it never um occurred to me like that. That was what I was, you know, that's why it was named that. But um that, that's oh, my funny. No. funny. <laughs> don't feel sorry for me I, i'm i'm fine i lived <laughs> oh you lived yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah yeah you you lived uh i you know it's interesting i i can't recall exactly when i met you um and we started talking about just full disclosure Rad radco uh, is a client of uh happy co and we are <laughs> very happy <laughs> with the, the software and in fact we used it yesterday when we were closing a, a deal in in uh, midtown atlanta um, but I remember what struck me about you as a person, and you kind of alluded to this when we were doing pre-recording a conversation, 
you, you're just an incredibly humble person. And I remember sitting in your in in presence with you and how humble you were coming across with something that, and you said this too pre-recording. I, I was like, wow, this solves so many problems that that we have. To your point about not being able to document, or at least not being able to document efficiently, and losing court cases because you can't show pictures and all of this stuff, and. And I think what you created is just tremendous and serves not only multifamily, but it serves other. Can you talk about like it's not just multifamily, you serve all kinds of silos of business. Yeah, so we we actually um, in the beginning of, of the, the, the company, we actually built um, the inspection app to do any type of inspection. Mm -hmm. Right. We're starting to get we, we launched on the App Store in 2012 and basically just had random people downloading it so at one stage we had a guy in georgia not where you're from the country georgia oh wow <laughs> right? he, was, he was using it to inspect atm machines and oh. so like, what and then we had a uh, we had cruise ships that used it we had um yeah the largest group in the uh cruise ship group in in europe come in the name of but we had cruise ships we have hotels like ihg marriott's we had um like uh pretty much any any weird healthcare. there was a lot of like, people inspecting like the, the hospitals and so we we actually had a very broad range of customers um and we thought we could conquer the world and um i think we realized probably two or three or four years in we realized that i just wasn't smart enough <laughs> to, to to build because it was really hard right because even even you think about commercial and and residential um one person wants the price per square Square feet or square foot, and someone wants to price it up per per unit or whatever it is, and that's really challenging. And some people like, well, why would I want to pay the per, per square foot and blah blah blah? And if I can pay per per user even, and so we, we just realized like, well, um, you know, we sat down and just said, what, what are we what are we really trying to build? Like, what what do I really want to solve? And and for me, I love real estate and I love technology and building and solving problems. Um, so. We really just focused in on multifamily and single family. like residential rentals is where we we focus in on today. Got it. Got it. So both both single family homes and in multifamily, just anything that's residential oriented. Is, it, is that right to say? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So so today we have, um, you know, we had the inspection app to start off with. Now we have a full uh, workflow maintenance software. So, you know, residents can put in their work orders or service requests. Um, the the maintenance technicians will pick that up, use our mobile app to complete the work orders or pick that up and go to the property, finish the work orders, close out the tickets, take a photo, the resident gets a notification. Like that's, it's really focused on that full um, maintenance experience in, internally and a little bit externally at this stage. So we have that, that software um, predominantly used by multifamily operators, um, owner operators and operators. And then we have a piece of software for due diligence, and which is the one that you you guys used um, yesterday. Um, and you know, and you get a very similar challenge. Hey, we we're going to all these units, and we're inspecting things, and we need to walk, you know, every three hundred and twenty units in this building. How do we do that scale? And so we use the inspection technology to apply it to this due diligence process, and it has really quick reporting. Everyone can see what's going on. So. Asset owners, investors love that that tool. They can go, oh, I'm going to build my my you know value add plan or whatever whatever it is from from that from that information, um, and has a lease file order component. So then you're making sure your leases are uh, in line. Um, and then we we have um, the third product at the moment is for lending. So um, Freddie Mac is one of our large customers. They Every single loan that's originated in multifamily last year went through our system. Wow! Wow! <laughs> Which is crazy, right? It's it's to it, and and all the lenders on board. So you have your CBRE, your Greystones, your Bacadias, Walker Dunlops. Um, all of them are using the same software for the underwriting inspection process right now. Wow! Wow! That's awesome! Congratulations! <laughs> yeah. And so when you when you ask me like, hey, you seem really humble, it's because. I realize I, sh I, I shouldn't even have a seat in some of these rooms, let alone have them as customers. Um, so we're just really grateful and for uh, like, Mike, I, I wake up every day and, and um, I, I didn't plan to build 
a company like this. Right? I, I started just trying to solve my own problem as a landlord, <laughs> and and yeah. we were focused on single family. And and today, like we have about um, you know over three million units, probably about three and a half million units of, of d- data on the platform. Uh, 300 million photos <laughs> we've captured in the system. Like it's it's just become it's become a really um, yeah beyond my sort of wildest imagination or dreams. And and to top it off, like um, the people I work with are just amazing. Like I and that's 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 all you can really wish for, right? Like something a, a big challenge. You wake up and then you work with people that you love and enjoy um, as humans. And and then you know that that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh. If you get those two parts of the equation right, it's kind of like the rest of it. Not that it isn't work, but it kind of takes care of itself and it doesn't feel so much like work because you're doing it with people that you that you very much yeah. enjoy. Yeah. yeah. I uh, yeah. And, you know, I know I know you're not giving yourself enough credit, but I, I just have to believe in my heart of hearts that the the values you bring to the world every day as, as a human being are, you know, they when you show up and you're a good person and you're you're full of honesty and integrity, I think the world just rewards you for that. And and certainly you've you've earned what you have uh, built, you and your team. So I, I hope it does reward people like me, but I don't know. Like it's, um, I, I think it's you know something I've learned is you 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 live and work towards your strengths and not your weaknesses. Um, mm-hmm. It's funny, as society, you grow up and it, it always tells you to, oh, you know, focus on your weaknesses and make it better. And you realize I'm putting putting so much effort in trying to fix these weaknesses. Um, yeah, I, I should just focus on my strengths. <laughs> I feel yeah. I have more energy just doing that, right? So, yeah. Uh, I, I think that's so right. I did, I've read a few books back there that, um, as of late, it seems like the literature has sort of shifted toward exactly what you just said. R- really do double down on your strengths and and shore up your weaknesses certainly you don't want a weakness to present itself um, in some ugly way that just dismantles everything else but but to your point um you know, focus on that stuff that's really yielding the highest return for yourself <laughs> and, and others really for others first and then and by default it kind of happens for your yourself yeah i i want to i want to shift gears a little bit i want to talk about i know we have a little bit of a constraint in terms of time here so i want to make sure we we fit in two things so we're going to take like a little a hard left uh, and talk about it I, it seems like to me you were working in the virtual world so to speak before covid accelerated that sort of dynamic in the world because you were you were between two offices in australia and, and certainly in california um, and so I, I'm just interested, and I, I'm quite certain our audience is interested in how you, maybe you're sort of a few innings ahead of everyone else in, in terms of that. And then maybe we can end cap our conversation by talking about the uh, the raise you just went through the with uh, Camber Creek. I think that's super interesting. Uh, and that would uh, be something our audience would want to talk about. So hybrid work or, or not even hybrid work, virtual work. Can you kind of just talk about Happy Co's experience with that? Yeah, so how we've kind of dealt with the with COVID and everything. Yeah. Yes. Um, so it's been very interesting. So um, by virtue of our company, so we have uh, today we have about 120 people in the company, half in Australia in Adelaide, and then the other half across the US. Um, when when COVID hit, we essentially had um, the Adelaide team was in the office, and we had a bunch of people in San Francisco, which I was at at the time. Now I'm in Carlsbad which is amazing. Um, But then we had a bunch of people across the US. So we weren't actually strangers um, to working remotely. And a lot of your your viewers and listeners, except for the corporate folks, most people are in the field and they are remote. So I was actually really excited to some degree that we were able to become a fully remote company because then everyone would have this equal level playing field of, of feeling like, you know, connected because everyone's remote. Well, what I really hated and uh, disliked was um, when, when I was in the San Francisco office and you do like a, a call and you, you know, you're doing it in like a Zoom room, or whatever it is, a, a big big group of people, it always made the ones that were at home feel very isolated. And during COVID, when we, we were at our individual homes and we're doing the, the weekly meetings that way, everyone just felt, you could see everyone's faces up close and just felt closer. So I. I really enjoy that. So we now that sort of I wouldn't say COVID is over, but people are trying to learn how to live with COVID. We're, we're having some you know, re- reconsidering how um, 
how we work, right? And then so the Australian office, we're look, move, looking to move to a new office. So we're trying to think about how do we build, continue that sort of theme. So is the, the office isn't going to be like these desks anymore where everyone sits at the desk and then, oh, let's here's a weekly meeting. Everyone goes to this big room. I, I, I'm trying to move it to this place where um, there's a lot of collaborative space where there's like a cafe or some sort of cafe in an office sounds really good, but sort of like this co-working space. Um, and then individuals can go to the room like when, they, when they're working, everyone has their own desks and they have zoom calls at their own desk so that means like how do you soundproof that that little area um yeah. but because my, my sense is people will choose to work from home two or three days a week come to the office two or three days a week and your office has to be something very enticing to make them want to get out of their, their their bed and put on clothes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah so i think those are the, the few things <laughs> moving towards um i had to say like during covid we had to really step up out. And even as a yeah, running the company, I didn't realize it didn't affect me and I was really happy. But um, I, I know some people were definitely struggling at home, especially if you have our homes aren't built for uh, working from home. Right. So it's always if you have a, a business area, it's usually this really tiny study area. It doesn't have doors. So I think the way we build homes is going to change or have to change, maybe like a very small closet room. Um, right. Right. That, that sort of um, has a lot of glass facing outside, so you, so it doesn't feel like you're in a box. I think the right. um, way we build homes are going to change as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's right. We're we're going through that same experience now, and it's it's interesting that the the pod. I'll refer to it as a pod, but the pod idea where you have these pods in your office where people can go and do, whether it be a Zoom call or it be be a highly focused or highly concentrated work. You don't have that sort of yeah. noise or distraction from the room. It's I think mean, it was interesting. I saw something who knows I won't be able to cite the source, but they build these sheds that you actually set in your backyard at your home. <laughs> that becomes your office. If you don't like if you're trying to custom you already live in a house that's not built to your point, you go out in the backyard in your your yeah. shed. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I think I think um, I, I made an investment in a, a small investment in a company that that builds meeting rooms, like uh, movable meeting rooms, because I'm like that. That's really cool. Like I, I don't think they've got it right for the residential side, but definitely for work, you, you can kind of buy these meeting room pods and you just place them across the you know the the office. Yeah. Um, really bullish about it, but I just I think there's going to be more of those sort of creative ideas. I, I 100 percent agree with you. I, th I think it's uh, somebody said this, so I can't attribute it to myself, but there's like COVID has presented uh, a million different problems and there are a million different solutions for those million different problems. And the, the point is, we're all trying to work through that right now. Right. And so the, the piece that, um, uh, that we we did during COVID. So the, the second week COVID hit, we um, I had all these calls from our customers in the lending space, right? They're like, hey, we can't go walk properties anymore. And, you know, this, this is like billions of dollars worth of transactions that just grind into a halt. Right. And so um, we had a call with a bunch of them and they said, how do we get to units? How do we get to units? We need to do the inspections on, on these properties, blah, blah, blah. And so what we came up with, um, we actually built a virtual inspection tool, um, which, uh, yeah, so... I remember we did it the exact same way. So we had this epiphany like, hey, what, what if we could do this virtual inspection tool? Um, then we don't have to send people on site anymore because they're already on site. And we built uh, a video. I remember I called one of our team members who was in support, but he had, he had a, uh, a drone, right? And he was good at recording stuff. So anyway, we got him in. <laughs> and uh, we, we 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 went to across San Francisco. We just did a bunch of like fake video recordings. So we we did this whole splicing of this nice video. Went back to the lenders and said, "Hey, have, what do you think of this virtual inspection tool?" Um, and they loved it. And we actually uh, that's what that's what they're using today. So uh, and the tool. So what what it does is so then you have a person on site with their smartphone. You send them like a six digit code, like a Zoom call. They walk around with their smartphone, they show their camera, so they're walking around property. Someone's on the other end at a computer or laptop guiding them through the property, saying, hey, move to the left, don't move, let me take a photo, and they're able to, to take a photo remotely. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so essentially they're, they're doing an underwriting 
inspection or appraisal inspection remotely at their desk. Unreal. Um, yeah, and the asset managers can do that as asset, you know, you do those site walks or site surveys and you forget, oh, go fix the, the landscape or the bush or the shrubs or whatever you, you do. And it's it's so now you can actually take photos, make notes. So you're essentially doing a remote inspection. Um, but yeah, so talking about your know, creativity, I'm really glad the team pulled together and came up with this great idea. So yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's amazing. There's this sort of principle of constraints. Uh, I heard a story. I won't tell the story because it, it'll be too long. But yeah. sometimes when when you have constraints or you have boundaries, you're you're much more creative, right? Because you're you're narrowly focused. And I think COVID did that. It, it, you know, the down there's certainly a big giant downside, sad part of COVID. But there is this sort of silver lining in COVID in that it created these constraints that have unleashed some incredible creativity in the in the world. Yeah. No, is I, it, I, all kinds of disciplines. Okay, I know we have like nine minutes left, but I am super interested to hear about this raise and and what this does for you as an organization. I, I certainly I've read the press releases and sort of teases out future products, but I I'd love to hear from the founder. Right, what what is the vision for this uh, this raise from Camber? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So Lambos and Ferraris for everyone. That's sort of, <laughs> of course, guess, of course. <laughs> No, uh, it, so so for us, um, we we resisted raising a lot of capital um, for a long time. A for two reasons. One, finding the right partner is important for us. For or for me anyway. Like I I don't want to work with douchebags. <laughs> sure, um, sure. And it's really hard because if you bring on a a capital partner. Um, a lot of them have very specific financial outcomes that they want. So we, so we actually, the company was actually profitable for the last two or three years, right? And so we were like, oh, let's control our own destiny. Let's just go keep doing what we want to do. Um, so finding the right person was important. And then the, the other part was like, we didn't really know what we would do with the money for a long time. Oh. Right. Even so, if we had money, we didn't know. But um, we now have a, a very good view of the world. Um, I won't share too much except that um, we, we have a lot of data. We have a sure. lot of information. Um, 300 million photos, right? Like that's 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 a ton of photos. A lot of a lot of <laughs> units on the system now, um, and we think that there's an opportunity to use that data to to really improve the way that the industry works. Um, you know, it's it's crazy to me how we have to still send people on site to walk units. Like sure. that should be a, that, and to collect the data. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, yeah. So. Um, we think there's opportunities to improve that whole process, but um, ultimately for us, the the reason why we we raised money um, was that I didn't want to sell the company. We, we had, yeah, we had a bunch of offers just before COVID, and and we turned them down. And to me, I'm like, if I if I sold the company and walked away with you know 100 million, 200 million, that wouldn't change my life. Like like it, it wouldn't be a better person it wouldn't make me yeah it just wouldn't change my life and what i really enjoy doing is working with customers like yourselves and and solving your problems All right and and yeah and, and that's i want to do that for another 10 years and and um that's why we raised the money because i just wanted to keep building stuff um build stuff the right way solve problems in different ways that that's been done before like i don't want to go build the same property management system that you already have <laughs> i don't yeah. want to build the tools that you already currently maybe there's tools that i can improve and make it 5 10x better there's some tools which i feel like we can build and make them integrate better with each other mm -hmm. um so i think there's cool things that we can build and the, the reason why i took the money is because i just want to keep building things for multifamily and solve problems <laughs> yeah i i just love this just bring bringing you back full circle to your your humble nature it's uh you know I, I get frustrated. I've expressed this publicly many times where, you know, companies like yours will build to a certain point and then the legacy property management systems in the world buy you up and starve you of resource or or they try to integrate into that ecosystem and it doesn't really work like it used to. And I, I get very frustrated by that. And I applaud people like yourself who don't do that and and really just continue to try to make the industry better without uh, 
I don't want to call it selling out. That sounds really crass, but it's it is a form of kind of cashing in, so to speak. And and I get it, but and, and I, one thing that we did in, as part of this fundraise, so Canberra Creek was the lead investor. Um, Canberra Creek LPs, their, their investors actually come from real estate and multifamily. So we were really excited about that. Um, Casey Berman, who who led the round, he knows a lot about multifamily because his family's been in it. So we thought there's great alignment there. We didn't want to sell the company. There's great alignment there. He, he said, yep, run for another 10 years. So we, we love that. But we also raised um, a big chunk of the of the capital from our customers. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. And that was the, you know, the exciting part for me. We, we, I, I made sure like, hey, we want to carve out a, a, a large chunk of our customers. And, you know, these are customers but now people that i call friends and and you know like it's to me like that that's really fun like if i can come to a dinner table and say hey you know this this is we built this thing and you're like oh this is awesome and it's moved my business from ecstasy you know like we 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 it's just the i i really just want to be a great partner for for the industry um a lot of people talk about it they come and they go yeah. <laughs> and, I, yeah. and i'm like like we have a short time on earth and so let's you know make something exciting and change yeah change the way we improve the way we do things make people happier <laughs> i i love it that sounds like a fantastic end cap right there make everybody happier and i i think you've done a tremendous job of that and i i can't wait to see the next 10 years unfold for your organization and and you personally because you've you've already put a dent in the multifamily space but uh the dent is going to be bigger and better than ever i think i just believe i believe in you and what you're doing big time so well, Jin, you th Jin Du, thank you very much for taking the time out to do this. I know you got a hard stop. Uh, I want to be respectful of that. And uh, But when you start to release products in the future, I'd like to have you back on and so we can talk about those and promote those if you don't mind. Yeah, I, I can't. Yeah, we, we've got one at the moment, which I'm really bullish on. I, I can't wait to, um, yeah, I'll share that in, in, in another episode. I love it. Thank you so much. And for everyone else, we'll see you next time.